St. Thomas. Mel announced this trip last week in the episode. She said, you know, the girls have been trying to get together and trying to be in a good place. So she felt like a girl trip was, you know, a good idea. At least that's what she had it. That's how it went in her head. Now, how it started kind of started out a little rocky. Let's dive in. So they arrive. This is St. Thomas. I need to go to St. Thomas. This looks beautiful. It looks like a paradise over there. I've never been to St. Thomas before. I've been to Barbados. I've been to a tropical place before. I've been to, you know, well, Cancun, I guess it's tropical too. But I've been there. But, you know, this looks like, you know, a dream. Anyway, here's a picture of the, uh, I guess, Airbnb that they were staying at beautiful so 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 beautiful this is like different panorama shots of the uh, same house they had an infinity pool outside the accordion um sliding glass doors and i guess when you walked in the front door you saw all you saw was ocean infinity pool going into the ocean beautiful beautiful <laughs> anywho mel arrives her crew, her girls, Mel, Lauren, and uh, Charnita. Charnita? It's not Charnita. It's, Char it's Charnita, I think it is. Dr. Charnita Foster, I want to say. And just so you know, I'm thinking she's the MVP of this episode. Because <laughs> she gathers Tisha together to end. We'll get to it. But I just wanted to say she was the MVP of this episode. Love her so the girls walk in they're greeted by the uh, staff that will be um you know i guess serving them you know during their stay i'm assuming this is the concierge i'm not sure i don't know if he was the you know because i don't see him anymore at, at in this episode but i'm assuming he was just there to greet them to get them settled and to give them the lay of the land and then, of course, you see Lauren. I, I just wanted to copy this slide because this showed that Lauren was also there, too. Now, these two guys um, come in. Mel greets them, and I think they're going to be her greeters when the girls arrive. You know, talks to them for a bit. Meanwhile, while she's talking to them, giving them, I guess, what she's expecting of them, the girls are arriving in the airport. Unbeknownst to them, Sonny was also arriving. Now, I'm not understanding this particular part because Sonny had to go get her luggage off of the same conveyor belt that they did. And they were all shocked to see her. Now, whether she boarded the plane before them and they didn't see her board or what have you, I don't know. But it just seems like they were all on the same flight. How did y'all not know that Sonny was there? Because y'all, when she came down, y'all acted like, she shouldn't have been there or like where'd you come from y'all all on the same flight that's how i'm taking it anyway i didn't understand this whole scene right here but anyway poor sonny she walks up and says hi kimmy how you doing she gives kimmy a hug and she greets everybody by name but nobody gives her like this warm welcome it's like hey you're in a different country <laughs> you're on a tropical island and that's your greeting. Hey, that was so, I thought that was horrible, horrible. And it doesn't get any better. They get on the van, I guess, to take them to their Airbnb. And everybody's like very, like, closed mouth, not really saying much. They're not having, you know, kiki, ha ha conversations. They're just, it's weird. And she even says that when she gets on the, Van, it's like it was like the first day of school in high school or something. And she said, These girls, the, the ladies, they, they're so immature. I can't believe they're all Team Destiny. How are they all Team Destiny? Who's who is about to, if she don't get that money together, gonna be behind bar. Anyway, that's another story. Sorry, y'all, I digress. Anywho, they are all acting like she doesn't even exist and they put her and then she's in the back. I felt sorry for for Sonny. I really did. Who I mean, these are grown women. At least they're supposed to be. 
and then Kimmy, when she gets on the, on the van or about the board, she says, oh, we're going to have problems. Now, I don't know if that was directed towards Sunny or the whole situation in general, but I thought that was horrible for her to say that. It was terrible. I don't know what's wrong with Kimmy either. Because she was a side chick at one time. Allegedly. Anyway, they arrive at the Airbnb. They're walking through the, you know, the pathway to the door. And um, they're like, wow, this is nice. They're thinking that everything is so beautiful and lovely. I know Sunny gets out of the van and says this was all worth it. Kimmy comes right in, gets her champagne and hugs Mel. Some of this is beautiful. Melody has set the standard. So they all get together. They're all toasting. This is my girl, Shanita. She toasts with the, her single friends. They're toasting with the married friends. Anyway, um, and they're all going to say, yeah, this is going to be a wonderful trip. So Melanie, all you know, they all walk out by the pool. Melanie says she's already assigned their bedrooms. Go find your bedrooms, put your stuff away, and um, at least get settled in your room. And they come back out because they have appetizers and everything, you know, from the shop. So everybody goes, looks for their room, and, you know, there's a couple people that aren't really happy about their room assignment. So that, as you know, Mel and her girlfriends are sitting upstairs because they've already picked out their rooms. Um... They're sitting up there, and meanwhile, you know, Nell comes up because she can't find her room because there's no nameplate for her anywhere. And Mel explains to her, I'm sorry, Ms. Nell. I guess whoever her assistant was must have forgot to print out a nameplate for her to put on her room, but she picked out the nice room. She's by herself in the big space. As you know, as their elder, she made sure that she had a perfect room. And Miss Nell was like, you know, you gonna stop, you know, giving me this undercover shade, talking about I'm your elder. She said, she said, well, you're the oldest one here. She said, well, how you know I'm the oldest one here? She said, because you are. <laughs> she said, you may not look it, but you are. She said, I have respect for my elders. But I don't know how, why that was even necessary, though, Mel, because I, that right there, I feel like you didn't have to say. You could just say, because you looked out for me. In Houston, you could have said that. I made sure I looked out for you. Mind you, I, I, my my sister, whoever, and she didn't have to put blame on anybody, but in the midst of getting everything together, your nameplate was left out. It wasn't done on purpose. That's all she had to really say to Nell. But Nell, again, came in the house on 10. Now, I'm assuming she might have had a little bit more libations than the others, okay? Because I don't know if she started at the airport if she started on the plane and then again she was you know drinking her champagne while she, when she got there but she was lit y'all can't tell me miss Nell wasn't lit because for her to go over and above and beyond about a nameplate was crazy to me she was on ten thousand. <laughs> but mel tries to quiet her down and let her know she was not forgotten and she did look out for her So she's like, I need you to calm down. She said, I need you to go get your room. She said, your name place not on there. She said, but let me tell you, you do have a good room. Go find your room. And then they flash back about how she looked out for Mel and her Houston trip. And she made sure that Mel was away from her ex, who was again on the trip. And she wanted to make sure there was a lock on the door. I don't know what she thought Martel was going to do to her, but anyway. Nell made sure she was taken care of. And that's all Mel could remember is that I knew I took care of Mel on my on our Houston trip. She could have took care of me on this trip. And I think she did. It's just that she was on 10,000 and she couldn't hear nothing. However, the room that she put Tisha and Kimmy in, I think they call it like a powder puff kids room. I don't know, but they all looked like they had, it was three queen size beds in the room. It was a big room. Had to be big enough to put three king size beds in the room, and it came with a bathroom in it. Well, of course, they have to share a bathroom. But um, evidently, they said that Kimmy and Tisha thought that was disrespectful to put them in that room. And Trisha must have heard them and 
came out to see what they were fussing about. She said she saw their faces and they looked PO'd. So she goes out there and she asks, you know, what's going on? If anything, she should have been the one probably put in there with the friend. And, you know, she said they probably might not have liked me much, but, you know, that's probably how I should have went down because those two should have had their own room. Trish, shut up. Why do you feel like they should have? If you knew the rhyme or reason as to why they got the room, you wouldn't say that. I mean, people are crazy. This is a free trip. Nobody should be tripping off anything. You got a free trip to go to St. Thomas, accommodations, everything take care of. Maybe you just had to, you know, provide your airfare or whatever. I don't know about that. But you got a free trip to St. Thomas. A free, at least a free accommodations. I'm assuming, I'm assuming they pay for the flights too, but at least free accommodations and meals and so forth. And, they, and, it, and, it, and it, uh, what you call them? And, um, you know, the, the, the activities, what'd you call them? So Trish comes out there and talks to Kimmy and Tisha. Tisha's saying, you know, it's disrespectful to put her in that room. So somehow I think, I think Sonny goes back and tells Mel that Kimmy and the, no, that Letitia's upset about her room. I don't think she even mentioned Kimmy. So she says, well, let me go out and talk to them. And she explains to them how she came about the room assignments. And she said, the reason why I put you all in that room is because is because you all are sister-in-laws, for one. Two, Tisha wanted to bring a plus one. So she felt like all of them could possibly stay in the room together. She said, but... It's not a big deal. She said, if you don't want that room, that's fine. We can give you up. We can give up our rooms. Y'all can have our rooms. She said, because me, Shanita, and Lauren can go in that room and have a nice, you know, little kiki or whatever. She said, it's not that big a deal. She said, and everything that we have planned, we're not going to be here that often anyway. So she said, I didn't think they made a big, that big of a deal. So Kimmy explained to her that based on, I guess, their history and their so-called friendship, I got air quotes going on um, that, that she expected more. And um, she said in the, in the accommodations are, are kind of small or what have you. And Tisha pipes up and she says she felt that the room that they got spoke volumes of how Mel felt about them. And Mel's listening and she's like, well, that's not the case at all. She said she told them. She said, well, they'll be glad to get out of the room. So then finally, they came to their senses and said, no, you know, it's fine or whatever. She said, we're good after it was explained to them. But Tisha seems to think that Mel is lying and that's not the case at all. And she needs to own it. Tisha, why are you trying to find fault in the trip? You got a free trip. When the last time you and Marcel, Marceau, went anywhere tropical without the kids not talking about Destin, florida where is the last time y'all been somewhere okay i move on so then while they're coming to a you know a happy medium and you know they're they're okay where they're gonna deal with the the room that they've been given um and they seem like they have you know whatever it is that they were feeling kind of squashed or whatever. Here comes Nell, she, who's still on 10,000, talking about everything okay. She looked around. She was lit. I'm telling you still, she still hadn't come down off of that. And she says, everything's fine. She was like, and then she goes, she brings up the Houston trip. And she's like, I know for a fact that everybody wasn't happy about the, the rooms at the Houston trip. And, Tisha, Tisha was like, yeah, and we just sucked it up. So Ms. Nell was like, yeah, so that's why I'm telling you, y'all going to have to suck this up. Like that, right? So Kimmy's like, first of all, I don't know what all this is. She said, but we don't need all this extra drama. She said, we're fine. We've already got this squashed or whatever. And Ms. Nell was going back and forth and talking about, y'all just need to suck this up. And Kimmy's like, first of all, I don't need another grown-up to tell me what I need to suck up. She said, that's not even, we, you're not even a part of this conversation. Why are you even out here? <laughs> she didn't say that verbatim. 
I am, you know, I don't know, make it up, whatever. I, in my, that's what I heard in my head. Okay, so I'm paraphrasing. But basically, Kimmy wasn't feeling Miss Nell when she came out there with her antics. And Miss Nell was still on 10,000. She wouldn't bring it down. And then she finally was like, look, all I'm saying is y'all need to be, y'all need to get it together and suck it up. She said, because I had complaints too and blah, 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 blah. And they're thinking to myself, I'm thinking, and I know they're thinking because I was thinking to myself, Miss Nell, what they got to do with them? Why are you even out there? But Sunny being her, putting on her producer hat, sent her out there talking about Miss Nell. I think you, or maybe somebody needs to go out there and, you know, make sure everything's up. Sonny did that. That was her producer hat, and she has not let it go. Sonny, I still need you to be a cast member. Cut it out. You're no longer a producer. Stop that. But you started that stuff, Sonny. You did that. So Miss Nell goes in the house after they go back and forth. I think Tisha must have touched um, Miss Nell, and Miss Nell was like, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't touch me or whatever. And Tisha said, well, you were having like a, you know, a slip. You know, your, your, your nipple was slipping. She was like, I don't care. Don't do that. Don't touch me. She said, well, you want your nipple to show? I don't, you know. She was calling herself, helping her out. And it went left. So Miss Nell walked away and went, in the, and went back into the home. And then Nell and then Melody... Tisha and Kimmy and Kimmy's like look that's not that's not even gonna work that's not gonna work right there that's not helping things so Melanie again is trying to settle the girls down and saying look this is gonna first girls trip we need to make we gotta need to do right we gotta just come together and we're gonna have fun she's like trying to bring peace to the situation and Miss Nell again who's on 10,000 was not here for it but she goes in the house and then she talk and then she goes in there fussing talking about i don't know what they're talking about she said but i kicked that you know boo 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 and i'm thinking they're saying miss now we sent you out there to be the peacemaker what are you doing <laughs> i'm telling you miss now was on 10,000 for a minute and then i think Right after she finishes talking to Tisha and Kimmy, that Mel that is, she goes and grabs Miss Nell and has to calm Miss Nell down and say, look, Miss Nell, she was like, look, I I, I want everything to be peaceful. And Miss Nell's like, look, if, if I got to leave, I'll go back home. And I think she might have, she should have went back home, honestly, because she was just all over the place. And if she had gone back home, I wouldn't have been mad about it. You know, go on back home, Miss Nell, because you're just causing unnecessary chaos. It's already enough chaos in the room. You don't need your an added antics. Anywho. So Nell talks to her, calms her down, and they come to a happy medium. And she says she's calm now, and they all go, all go back to the group. Finally, after everybody's, you know, emotions have simmered, Mel can say, let's start our trip. So she has talked about they were there during the time of carnival she said but she has brought carnival to them and she brings out these dancers and they're all you know sitting around you know dancing and everything with the with the dancers and everything and then finally after they came out and i guess they had their appetizers or whatever but there was she was like it's time to eat so that's when they go to the dinner table and the antics start there why she had to emphasize that her friends were single and did that mean that her single friends catch the show three degrees she has three degrees right was more funner than the married friends just saying anywho listen to this audio and i'll come back and we'll talk about it. Now with the single friends, why do you have to like specify that they're single? Oh, I just, because I like for things to be super clear, you know what I'm saying? So I wanted y'all to know like that I was bringing my single friends. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Cause you know, y'all are trying to say the single friends are more fun or funner than the married friends. Those are the other ones. Yeah. You have, if you have a bit of structure, yeah. 
You were saying that. You said that. You didn't say verbatim, but not verbatim. But I'm saying your actions. We didn't just your action. If you chose to, to be friends with somebody after she has said out loud, "I'm hurt. This is what they did to me," and you choose the person that's hurting me, you're not my friend. Not my friend right? And I'm cool with that. But you're not my friend. I'm not going to play both sides. I'm not going to teeter-totter and jump and do this or make it feel that way. If you can get to that place, I think this is a dope group of people. But I just think you have to figure out where that is because I feel like there's a whole bunch of people at this table that's the ops. Yeah. I am trying to be nice and friendly. Mel said she was going to bring in some of her single friends. I was like, time with them. And this is not the on time here. Mel, girl, you're going to have to own this. Well, that whole audio clip, Shanita got this one together. And now look at her. Now she in her feelings. Destiny, your girl ain't there yet. But she hope, she hope, I hope and pray that they get Destiny together too before the end of the trip. Sunny praised this trip. So everything must have went in her favor. But or the spotlight wasn't on her. It was more so on everybody else. They had things going on. Trisha, because I think they ambushed her at the table. I think some of the previews um for that might be coming up. Um I'm not sure how many days they stayed in St. Thomas, but this trip must have been off the chain. And I'm so here for it. Y'all tell me what you think. Did Tisha not get read at the table? What tripped me out was how she went up an octave. She's part of the freak group. She's one of the circle. Da -da 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 -da. Why were you even going there, Tisha? Because you knew you were wrong. Your whole voice changed and went up 10,000 octaves. You knew you were wrong. And you were trying to play like this was merely innocent. And it wasn't. Your whole game plan was to bring destiny because you knew she was a thorn in Melody's side. You do things, guess what? You ain't nothing. She ain't nothing but Wanda. Just a younger generation, a younger version, but she is nothing but Wanda. Got a little, a teeny bit more smarts than Wanda. She can say some words more correct than others, but she is nothing but her mom. That's all I see. Just a little bit more educated. Where Wanda supposedly only had gone up to junior high school. Tisha doesn't seem like she has a college education, but she is. She does have something, some some smarts. She can't spell and she can't speak. So I don't good thing is is it's spell check. I'm hoping in, that she had used quite a bit in her schoolwork. <laughs> Cause I know she can't spell. Because when she showed us the text message, that wasn't even spelled right. In her own phone, Melody Sheree, S-H-R-I-Sheree. Okay. Anywho, that's all I got, y'all. Please like, share, and subscribe. Drop down in the comments and let me know what you thought about this episode. Everyone be blessed. Peace. <laughs>